What I love uh, about the Bible generally, and uh, indeed about this book of Nehemiah in particular, is its raw honesty. Uh, and in chapter 3, we're told that not everyone actually comes out to help. Uh, a first reading might indicate that all was good and all was easy, but that wasn't actually how it was. Verse 5, And next to them the Tekoakites repaired, but their nobles would not stoop to serve their Lord. Despite this uh, disappointment in that these noble leaders uh, would not actually step out to, to roll up their sleeves and to get involved in the work, that there were others who more than made up for that. They were so enthusiastically committed to the task. Verse 27, after him the Tekoakites repaired another section opposite the great projecting tower as far as the wall of Ophiel. So having completed the part of rebuilding outside their own house, they then went to lend a hand with others. There was real commitment to the task. There were those who were working really enthusiastically. Uh, among those listed are goldsmiths and perfume makers and, and merchants and, and others, even priests. A lot of them probably had never laid two stones one on top of the other ever. And yet they get involved in the task. They roll up their sleeves and they work wholeheartedly, and enthusiastically and energetically. Alec Batir uh, captures this uh, as he reflects on this chapter with these words. He tells us, The builders regarded this work not as a grueling chore, but as a priceless opportunity. God had done so much for them, and this was their chance to do something entirely for him. We need that spirit in the church in these days. We all need to rediscover the privilege of serving and working and building and rebuilding. We also need to discover that past failures don't necessarily disqualify us. We're not good in the church of the 21st century at making room for those that God redeems and that God forgives and that God gives a new beginning for. We're not great at that in the church. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he said, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, drunkards nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Past tense. And then he continues, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And so the Lord would want us to be a church that can enable many and all kinds and conditions of people to be involved in the work of building and rebuilding. For his glory. In this chapter, we see that there were surprising people who didn't engage in the task of building and rebuilding, and that there are people that it might surprise us who did engage in the task of building and rebuilding. The important challenge today is that you and I would be numbered among those who do engage and who make room for others to engage in the task of building and rebuilding God's church for God's glory in these days. I'm going to end with a prayer that whenever I was at school was prayed every day by the then vice headmaster uh, who was a lay reader in the Church of Ireland as well. Every day he prayed, teach us, good Lord, 
to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labour and not to look for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, Lord, I would pray that right now your Holy Spirit would give us a right perspective in all things. And we pray, come Holy Spirit, and give us God's perspective in all things in these days. We pray this in Christ's name and for God's glory. Amen.